If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before listening on. What we can do to solve the question is draw a picture that captures the information described. So here we have the positive charge moving in the positive y direction and it's located 20 centimeters from the charge at the origin. Notice we changed the 20 centimeters into 0.2 meters. And the idea here is we want this positive charge to sort of veer off to the left and begin to undergo uniform circular motion. We have learned from previous chapters that to undergo uniform circular motion, there will be a centripetal force required. And the centripetal force points towards the center of the circular path. So we know, in other words, that there must be a centripetal force acting in this fashion towards the charge at the origin. This is indeed how we know that the charge is negative because we need an attractive force to pull the positive charge in the leftward direction. Now, in this case, the centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. We may recall again from a previous chapter that a centripetal force equals mass times a centripetal acceleration. And then the centripetal acceleration itself is the same thing as the speed squared divided by the radius. So we've substituted in that expression. We've set it equal to the centripetal force. Notice that the centripetal acceleration is going to have to be negative because it's pointing to the left. And so we actually need to include a negative sign in the formula here. And how do we know that the centripetal acceleration points to the left? Well, because it points towards the center of the circle. Again, a concept from an earlier chapter. Now, think about what type of force is present that's keeping the positive charge going around in this circular path. In other words, what is supplying the centripetal force? The question tells us to neglect the gravitational force, so we can't consider gravity as being that force. But in this case, because we have a positive and negative charge, it's actually going to be an electrostatic attractive force. And electrostatic forces obey Coulomb's law. So we're going to replace Fc with the Coulomb's law force which of course equals the Coulomb constant times the charge times the other charge divided by the distance between the charges squared. Notice we can divide out an R on both sides of the equation. Now, recalling that our objective is to calculate capital Q, which is the charge at the origin, we want to try to rearrange the equation to isolate capital Q. So perhaps the first thing we can do is multiply both sides of the equation by R. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by K lowercase Q. And as we'll see, that's going to help us isolate capital Q. So really, at this point, it's just a matter of plugging in the known values. Notice that the mass, although it was given to us, it was given to us in grams. So we have to make sure that we call that mass 0.8 times 10 to the minus 3. That way, we can convert the grams into the standard unit of kilograms. As mentioned, the radius is 0.2 meters. We've already done that conversion. The speed was given to us in the standard unit of meters per second. K is a constant that we'll write down in just a moment. And then Q, the charge, was given to us as well, but that also needs to be converted. So we convert microcoulombs to coulombs by, of course, multiplying by 10 to the minus 6. So let's go ahead and plug in all the known values. So there we have all the values plugged in. Notice that K is this 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And when you simplify that on your calculator, we can come up here and show the answer. We can see that capital Q is equal to roughly negative 1.11 times 10 to the minus 5. And since we calculated a charge, the unit would be coulombs. And that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.